welcome to the Most Excellent 80s Movies Podcast on the Most Excellent Podcast Network. It's a podcast where a filmmaker, a comedian, an actor, and a horror fan all find themselves stranded in the snowstorm of 80s movies we love, hate, hate to love, and love to hate. And no one knows who we can trust as we revisit these movies with a significant amount of nostalgia, but also with modern eyes. This is episode 26, The Thing, a movie selection from 1982 and... It's a wintertime movie selection because there's snow. Nobody agrees with me, but I'm sticking with it. I agree. From 1982. discovered something for 100,000 years it was buried in the snow and ice now it has found a place to live inside where no one can see it or hear it or feel it I know I'm human some of you are still human this thing doesn't want to show itself it wants to hide inside an imitation it'll fight if it has to but it's vulnerable out in the open if it takes us over and it has no more enemies. Nobody left to kill it. And then it's one. You guys gonna listen to Gary? We can beat one of those things! the end the little tagline says man is the warmest place to hide <laughs> that's so creepy <laughs> so this came out the same summer as et and boy people were not ready to, for this <laughs> <laughs> it was the summer of disgusting things uh well that voice you probably recognize as mr nathan blackwell hi there nathan blackwell filmmaker yes and i am chrissy Lynn's improvisational comedian and we have two guests today very exciting uh one is returning guest back with us it's adam rainey hello hello indeed <laughs> how are you i'm terrific so the last one i was here for was the breakfast club that's right so if you want a little more context to me you can go back to that yeah where you explain right. all of your right. acting Right, no need choices. to explain who you are now. No. Please just link back to that mm -hmm. episode. Just yeah. go back to the previous episode. You can get all my details there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure people who listen have an encyclopedic knowledge of all that we say and do, so that's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I'm an actor. I've worked with Nathan quite a few times, and uh, mostly comedic, done a lot of sketch comedy. And I love The Thing. I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. I have a feeling <laughs> that all three of you love it and are obsessed with it. And I'm going to be like the lone person who's like, it's also kind of gross. Your feeling might be right. Yeah. I that think is correct. So. It's definitely gross. <laughs> it's so gross. Sorry. All and right. also we have Jonathan Elliott here with us for the very Yay. first time ever. For the very first time ever. Hello. Al although... I listened to the Crawl podcast very wistfully, yes. <laughs> wishing that maybe in some alternate reality I'd been on that one. <sighs> I think that was a great movie. But we're not here to talk about that movie. No, we I, can. I, I always want to talk about that movie and Runaway. Those are the two movies that I Oh, my that God. I'm trying to convert never. people into Runaway, the Tom it's Selleck so movie. Have you watched Runaway yet? I don't know anything about Runaway. Oh, really? perfect. Do perfect. yourself a favor. Don't just watch it. It's on Amazon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have you, have Written you and directed by Michael Crichton. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> is that the Tom Selleck movie? That is the Tom oh. Selleck movie. I mean, I saw The Great Train Robbery in Westworld. Those are the other two he did, right? Mm-hmm. This is not like those. I mean, it has robots. 
but so not like Westworld. <laughs> exactly. So, oh man. So I, I I would not call myself a horror fan. Um, it's definitely a genre that I enjoy, but I freaking love this movie. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't help it. I can't wait to find out what you all love so much about it. When did you first see it? Uh, mid twenties, I'd say. Okay. Um, it was it was not one that I saw particularly too young. I I think I I don't know if I saw this or Escape from New York. It may have been one of those things to where I saw and and didn't really put two and two together like who John Carpenter was. You know, like I saw Big Trouble in Little China. I saw The Thing, and only then started to kind of piece together that they were by the same person. And what about you, Adam? When did you first see The Thing? Early 20s. It was uh, at a period where I was talking to everybody I knew saying, oh, no, I don't, I don't think horror movies are scary anymore. What am I going to do? I, every, <laughs> everything when I see is just either funny or stupid or I, I need something. And I got a lot of bad suggestions. And then I got suggested The Thing. And I watched that in the middle of the night by myself. And I was the like, perfect this, time. <laughs> this is what I was looking for. <laughs> nice. And Jonathan, were you also in your early 20s? And, no, I wasn't. It was much younger for me. Um, so I've been a horror fan since I was like five years old. And I remember first hearing about The Thing in issue 21 of Fangoria magazine. All right, we're going deep. We're going nice. deep. And <laughs> Respect. So that actually came out a couple of years before I was even able to buy it. So when I first saw it, and the first time I ever saw the movie was when it was released on video in 87. Wow, wow, nice. Why did it take five years to come out on video? Because home video came out in five years. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. They, they took a to while. Like, they took a while. They have to like manually turn cranks to put the VHS they, together. They, 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 there was a lot of just sort of like a VOD, like video on demand, like digital stuff. They were worried about people pirating it, and they had to kind of get over that, you know? E.T. was really one of the big ones that was like a home video. Like, oh, this is normalized now. VCRs were like two grand, right? They were expensive, yeah. Yeah, so you had to wait. Unless it came on HBO or Showtime, anything mm-hmm. like that. But. So what are some of your other favorites? Are you, Is it just John Carpenter that you love or like other horror favorites? Uh, there's way too many to mention. I'm, okay. You know, The Shining, of course, is one of my all-time favorites. Yes. I saw it in the theater also when I was full of snow. six, I think. So Isolation, snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm, snow is themes. terrible. People turning on each other. Yes. Possession. They're basically the same movie. Right. All right. <laughs> With Shelley Duvall. <laughs> Yes. Oh, and so you have a summary for us? Did you create a summary for us for oh, those right. who have not seen the thing? The summary. So, an alien spaceship crash lands on Earth, and much in Captain America style, the <laughs> ship and its inhabitant are frozen in ice. Many undetermined years later, it is uncovered, and due to the creature's ability to mimic forms of other organisms, it infiltrates the American research outpost, and one by one, incorporates them into itself, which turns into a tense situation of isolation, paranoia, ultimately resulting in self-sacrifice in order to save humanity. Yeah, well, yep. about sums it up. But you didn't mention um, Kurt Russell's beautiful hair? That so he, we... he grew his hair for a year for, for that. For, for this? For that. Why? Yes, his beard and his hair, he grew the for a year. And it's Castaway. Those are the yes. two. <laughs> Ugh, but he has that, it's like that same sort of feathered around the ear look that Snake Plissken has, too. See, so it's not all bad. No, there are definitely things that I like, and Kurt Russell and his hair are two of them. Yeah. This, this, so this movie is really kind of almost like a murder mystery, almost like a whodunit, mm-hmm. you know, as one person after another is kind of knocked off, and you don't know who is the thing. Because it basically can mimic everything about them. Like, they don't even know that they're the thing. Like, if, if it's basically mimic, mimicking them on a cellular level, they don't even know that they're the thing. You know? Right. Do and they or not know? I was unclear about that as well. Because I think the people that weren't the thing were nervous. Right. Right. But I think you knew when you were the I, thing. I, I bet you. So I. So um, watching some of the special features, some actors played it like they didn't know that they were the thing. 
but some of them also played it like they were starting to discover like they were you know and so and that that personality was starting to take over so it there probably wasn't a definitive thing it was like each actor kind of deciding there are a few different theories on that um, and, and the way that the thing can take over. One, of course, is it eats you, it devours you like it did with the dog, and then it, it creates a clone of the dog. Uh, another one is by sort of a cellular infiltration. And mm-hmm. so if you're infected, then bit by bit your body starts becoming the thing. With all those tendrils that... Exactly, yeah. Oh, those are so um, gross. And in that case, you know, there's, there's one theory that says the, the host doesn't realize this is going on until the thing decides to take over. Well, there's that moment too where you kind of wonder if Kurt Russell has been. Oh with yeah, you well this they they time? they full on lean into that, yeah. and then also Keith David, like he, there's a point where he just disappears and says, "Oh no, I saw something. I got caught in the storm. I got like, distracted." They, they're full on leaning into that doubt. They want you to suspect everyone. Yeah, and so the ending essentially, if you don't know if you're the thing, or if you don't know. If the other one's the thing. They're both sitting there waiting to see. Who freezes he... that first? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but, okay. Complaint. It takes so much space for the thing to thing someone. Is that what it's called, Jonathan? It's, the thing? <laughs> yes. To thing it's someone. The thing, to thing someone. To we'll thing just someone. call it that. We'll go with that. There's the tendrils, as you said. There mm-hmm. are crab legs involved. There's. It takes so much, like square footage yeah when he bit windows in the face he was spinning around knocking over furniture it's not it doesn't seem like any of the times we get to see it like it's a subtle thing well here's what i think on that i think that it depends on who is interfering with it while it's going on all the times that we see it happen there's some sort of external force either threatening it or yeah when it's discovered yeah then it's like then it freaks Let's out get and messy and disgusting. It's trying to push back. It's trying to run. It's trying to fight back. And when it's by itself, it's going to like tidy we, up. We, well, yeah. kind of, because there's the like when all the dogs are around it. Mm-hmm. That's when we get to see it go Pacow. full thing explosion all over the place. But I then, like thing explosion. That's that's good. That's really the only time we see it actually like assimil- trying to assimilate everything. Everything else kind of happens behind the you know what, what we don't. There see. is the scene though when. The commander, yeah, where he shoves his fingers into the guy's face. Uh, yeah. It's like, that would be... That's pretty clean. That's a pretty subtle way to do it. You just absorb the guy through the face. All of a sudden, you get all that cellular... I, yeah, so... Legos to so build that's, with. That's the thing's preference, is to face palm you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if it has to, it'll go full crab legs. Yeah, if it has to. It's like an assassin. If you can sneak in there, he'll get you. But if you're all of a sudden dropped in a room surrounded by enemies... Pull out your AK if you have it and start spinning around. Just go nuts. Scare tactic. Get those mm. wiggly things Make out. Make a big mess. And then so, clean it up after. Yeah, we did. That's the thing. We never got to see the scene where it kind of like carefully brooms everything away. Yeah. And then like tidies Buttons things up. the guy's shirt back yeah. up. Let's, let me just get the see? lip back where it Checks was. Checks the picture he took beforehand <laughs> to make sure it all matches. Parts his hair just a little bit. Perfect. It takes a moment to just be like. I'm not the thing. <clears throat> no, sorry. I'm not the thing. I am human. That's now perfect. I believe you. Got it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, but I also think that might be based on how shit-faced everyone is the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> let's be clear. It, so, like, you don't... So, uh, this Antarctic station, this American Antarctic station, it's probably full of, like, genuine scientists, and then all their support staff are people who probably fucked up somehow in life, and now they're stuck in Antarctica. Mm-hmm. You've it's got, basically the wall. Yeah. They've, and they've the, taken the That's black. the interesting thing. It's, like, like literally, like, more than half of them are probably support, su- support staff. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got people, like, you've got, like, the cook. You've got, um, like, uh, you've got the pilot. You've got so many other people who are just there to do work. Which I assume somehow involves like three flamethrowers, this type of work, because they've got three flamethrowers. Mm-hmm. It's crazy on hand. to de-ice that big truck thing that they have. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Go there well, with the flamethrower. Like, if you don't spend your budget by the end of the fiscal year, then you don't get that same amount of budget. Oh, next I'm going year. through that right now. So they're going to order the flamethrower. Got to get yeah. another flamethrower. Then you have it. And they definitely needed another one because his was pretty. 
malfunctioning. Look, who, whoever ordered the flamethrowers, just like on whatever, like on a whim or whatever, it paid off. Like yeah. they needed more flamethrowers. Mm-hmm. But they needed the next model up. Like, they did need the next model. Well, it was the 80s. So. That's true. <laughs> because really, as much as they burned those things, they always came back. Yeah. yeah they, they skimped on the dynamite. Yeah, they yeah. should have ordered more dynamite. Mm-hmm. So I have, hold on, I have a question about that though. So there's the scene where the guy runs outside, and he's on fire. Mm-hmm. So then he throws dynamite at him, and he explodes. Is that a good plan? I have that same <laughs> question. I have because that exact same question. There's just matter everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and it uh-huh. only takes Absolutely. one drop of it. It should have. It should have splattered someone, the closest person nearby. Oh. Which which happens to that one guy, right? He just gets all the blood on his face, and then it's like, oh, well, set him on fire. Should we wait for him to maybe be a little bit dead? Nope. No, he didn't get Fire. blood on his face. He got his... <laughs> like, the thing didn't just make a little mess. <laughs> Oops. Bit his head in half, basically. Right. In addition, right? They, they weren't going to stick a Band-Aid on there. And... <laughs> so, but, uh, like, seriously, blowing it up didn't seem like a good idea. Well, what plan do you have? Yeah. If you got flame, you got flamethrowers, everything looks like the thing. Oh, you're so c- calm and collective as things are starting to eat you. My plan is to not ever go to Antarctica. My plan is to avoid snow. Look, no one plans to go to Antarctica. It just happens. Yeah. You just end up, I need a helicopter pilot job without a background check. (laughs) Not a lot of options. I've been working on my beard and my beautiful feathered hair. So the reason why this movie is so well loved, I think, is because... It just it, it's a constant surprise. Like it, in terms of like the the horror and the suspense and then the kills. Like each time they're doing something new and different, but it's not like violating the rules. It's not like oh suddenly now Freddy Krueger can do this. You know, it's not like they're, they're it, It's like we're still discovering like what can the creature do and like how are the ways that it can do it. Like you know, so but it can do whatever. But it's not violating the rules of what it can do. It's just it's just kind of like doing these epic like guitar solos of, of you know, it's like... Of, so basically, the thing, any part of it is alive. And so as they are killing it, parts of it come off and become like it, its own separate organisms. And they're running away and they're fighting and they're doing crazy nutty things. Since it's effectively a life form that doesn't actually have a normal state. It's constantly trying to mimic other things so it's always altering its state so are you saying that one time it took over a spider crab and that's how it knows what spider crab legs are yes or maybe one of the people that it ate had eaten canned crab and it's like oh i got that dna source now where there's spiders in the room it's like oh i know what spiders do look at all this it's sort of like pokemon like you just try to catch as many as you can and then anytime you need one you can just bust it out loose crab and dog food we know it ate dogs plus it ate those norwegian guys they probably had tons of crab who knows what those dudes ate it is from outer space i mean it probably has come across other alien races too yeah like one that opens from the stomach a giant stomach mouth we need to build a wall to keep these things out (laughs) These foreigners are taking our bones. <laughs> what, did, what did it eat that had a petal face? I know, that was great. I don't know, what was the research that they were doing up there? Maybe oh, there was like a little menagerie that we don't know about. So oh, the, the, okay. this, is, this is, again, something I only gleamed not from my own power of observation, but uh, through the special features. Like the petal face, it's actually like five dog tongues. What? The teeth Snap. are dog tongues? Yeah, the, like the petals. <laughs> Wow. I like it less now than <coughs> so I did before. Uh, this movie is also really interesting, and it's not something I, it's something I didn't realize until it was over. There's, like, no character development. There's no character arcs. There's no there's females. Like, there's no exposition. Like, literally everyone is just doing what they need to do to survive. We, I mean, we get a sense of that everyone is different. And I thought they did a great casting. Like, we were talking about, like, in Die Hard. Like, everyone is so unique like you can immediately kind of get an idea of what these people are like it's big like a big ensemble stage play kind of thing where they're all stuck like in a in in a cabin or something like that but there's we don't get any information that happened pr- prior to this we're just very much in a realistic sense dropped in the middle of it and no one is like oh you know i'd love to go see my wife i've got to just be here for three more months and then i go back it's everyone is like just yeah, it's workplace horror it's very verisimilitude like you know like you're literally just dropped in there 
and like the silences play out of them not knowing what to do and it's played for the reality of it like the only character development or the only the only like bit of like exposition that i can think of that just wasn't part of like the plot of moving forward is where Kurt Russell is playing chess wizard. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Yeah, and, and then he dumps his drink into it when it cheats or when he loses mm-hmm. computer chess. And uh, that, all that, it, that's the only moment that it basically signals that this is our main character. It is. Well, it, the, and he's the handsomest. And he'd rather exactly. ruin and destroy everything than lose. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd already been into other John Carpenter movies. Yeah. Yeah. Although the chess thing, I love the chess thing because this is the foreshadowing to the very end of the movie is what that is. Oh, yeah. The, so he's the, playing the, the chess. Whiskey. He figures out or he realizes that he's going to lose. So the whole movie you have, who is it? Who is it? It's a big game. And in the end, he blows everything up and burns it all down just like he does with the chess machine. Got to flip the board yep, over. Flip it's the board. Gonna work. That does seem to be a Carousel. pretty good solution to just about everything. Yeah. But you know what I was thinking about is like when you watch a movie like gravity like sort of the opposite is true right she's like well i'm in space i might can i can get back to earth it'll be fine like i'll figure it out i'll use this thing and that thing and like i'll get back that's why the thing needed females (laughs) yes because that if there had been one lady there she would have been like guys are so ready to be like should we we just die should we just just die let's all just die there was actually going to be a blow-up doll in the movie they got cut the scene got cut so but it would have been a female yeah, like they're not even like, but wait, what if we could solve this? What if we could get away and kill the thing? Right? Maybe. No. It's, they're just like, let's How blow are we it all make up. It? Well, I think they hit that point of some, you know, somewhere during the movie and then realize this isn't a viable solution, so we all have to die. Yeah, but Sandra Bullock yeah. would have been like, I'm yeah. Gonna. It's not like Sandra Bullock, like if she returns, if she fails her mission and she returns to Earth, like Earth dies. Like there's no Earth dies in her scenario. It's like, do I get home or do I just die in space? Like it's survival. Like with the thing, it's like if evil is, this evil is so great that it requires a total sacrifice. We cannot allow all of humanity to, to be infected by this thing. We remember, don't you remember the com- the really obvious computer readouts? Twenty-seven thousand hours. That's all. That's, <laughs> That's not all that it many takes. hours. Yeah. yeah, the the I love that simulation. The green, the black and green computer doot, 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 probability that more than one of the team is infected seventy five percent. Yeah, that's a really good computer. <laughs> yeah, and then next it's it's what. Uh, what was the statistic that it? The how many hours, up? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, twenty-seven thousand hours, and all of humanity is infected. Yeah. So what if that's you know like the twenty eight days later version of like a sequel? Yeah, it's this, this is twenty eight thousand hours. This later. is like this is like a zombie infection. Like literally, if mm-hmm. this gets out, like we are not important enough to live if it means infecting everyone else. Okay, fine, Ethan, you win. I agree with you. That's still a long time, though. It, I mean, like according to Malcolm Gladwell, you could make two and three quarter geniuses. You could. We could figure something out. Also, like, what if the thing just you know, ate enough people to, like, want to just hang out and, like, and be retire. cool. Yeah. <laughs> or, we don't know. Like, Maybe it's really fun to be the thing. I mean, it's only seen Antarctica. So That's you're saying that everyone place. is pretty judgmental. Yeah. yeah. It's going to go like, out there and assimilate all the fun stuff. Yeah. It's going to get to Ma- Paris and be like, wait a minute. This I need to chill so the. Bad. I just need to chill the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think. That's true. That's possible. Is it possible, Jonathan? <laughs> it's just unloved. Just yes or it no. needs some love. It needs some fun. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Um, it just needed Moana to turn it around at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just it needed someone to say, hey, I see you. Don't let this define you. That's all. I, I have a, a sort of an <laughs> unrelated have question. Good, goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's, it's not, not your not, fault. <laughs> It is the same hair and beard situation, Robin Williams and <laughs> That's true. Kurt Russell. There. Are they in the same world of the same universe? Yeah. So I, I have a unrelated question. Oh, good. But, Perfect. Uh, place. So in like in screenwriting terms, there's the save the cat moment. Mm-hmm. When did that term become popular? Because this movie opens with the exact opposite. 
Yeah. It opens with the shoot the dog. Kill that dog. Oh, yeah. Well, it, the, it's really interesting because it puts you in a state of like, well, who the heck are these dudes trying to sh-? It's like, what pu- is Sarah pushing Palin doing? <laughs> Get out of here. It's like literally pushing that pressure against you on purpose to kind of destabilize you, you know? So the beginning, we, we see a, a helicopter and it's um, a bunch of Swedes, uh, I'm sorry, Norwegians, who are trying to shoot <laughs> this dog. And we're like, what the F is these pro- these guys' problems? And so the um, the Norwegians land, and the Americans who are watching this going, like, what is going on? And, yeah, we're just totally thrown off balance that they're trying to shoot this dog. See, I thought what was going on, but I thought, how can anyone shoot so terribly and throw grenades so terribly? <laughs> what is going on? I thought that same thing, but then I was like, the dog is moving, the helicopter is moving. They're probably and, so drunk, and, just based on... And plus, it's like negative 30 degrees. Like, I'm stepping outside at 50 degrees, and I could barely function. <laughs> we, we learned soon after, the guys are real butterfingers. <laughs> we really is. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to throw that grenade as a and just drops pivot. it right behind himself. Mm-hmm. You know, for some reason, uh, speaking of the beginning of the film, the very beginning of the film with the spaceship, I always forget that's even in there. Like oh that, yeah, yeah, like, it's like the, the beginning of Predator or something. Yeah, it's yeah. The opening of Predator. and I forget it every single time. Like, oh yeah, this is an alien movie, right? A spaceship actually lands. But what I was going to say is during the snow scene, what really sets me off is the first shot in the movie that's not the ship; it's the snow. And it looks like it's being filmed by someone who's really, really cold. And it's just sort of rocking back and forth. <laughs> yeah. This from the guy who used the steady cam in Halloween, like, which is the most renowned thing he's done, gives a camera to some guy who can't even stand still. Yeah, it, it was definitely weird. What it's is just up another with... way that they were making us off balance at the beginning. Right. 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 Yeah. And what is up with his hat? I wrote that exact same <laughs> that thing. That is an amazing. <laughs> what is the and deal what with that the, hat? And WTF that hat. So, so Kurt Russell has this. How would you describe it's it? A it's a sun hat, is what it is. It's like it's like something a Southern belle would wear to a garden party. A giant brown floppy Yosemite Sam hat. Yes. You know, it's a Coachella hat. It's pretty pretty amazing though. Well, I mean, we don't know a lot about McCready, really. Because in the right, beginning, we don't know anything. all he is is he's just a pilot. But then all of a sudden, he's got all these other skills. And then he knows how to throw dynamite. He's got tactics. And by the end of the movie, he's doing tuck rolls off of things and rolling in the snow. And he's an action hero. So mm-hmm. what is his background? I really want to know what McCready's background is. Yeah. My, my guess would be is that he's a military washout. Yeah. Like this is like – so he was in the military. So he's, he knows like combat and he knows basic stuff. But – He's kind of a rebel. Like he, there's that part of that Snake Plissken in him, you know, that that doesn't want to be tied down. We see that he's got problems with authority, but he's just hanging on by his fingernails to stay employed, like as a pilot. And he drinks for the pain. <laughs> so he's like Snake Plissken mixed with Captain Ron. Yes, exactly. Finally. They're pretty free and easy about breaking all the windows at their Antarctic research facility. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. And those are not double paned windows. That's just. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. he, he just gently taps on it with his revolver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not it's weather sealed. No wonder it's so cold in here. It's like there's probably a door nearby. You can. <laughs> yeah. No one, no one decided to caulk this window. So, okay. So, you sound less enthusiastic than us about Do this I? movie. Do, Do I? Do you want the floor? I, no, not at all. Like it's it's like it's fine. I do think that it's scary, but it's also just like so gross. And oh yeah. I think the grossest things are the things that don't move, like like the frozen blood that's just coming out of that guy uh, when they go to the Norwegian. Is it? Oh, Nor- the, or Swed- Wait, the Swedish base. Me. <laughs> when they go to the Swedish base, yeah. Norwegian base. They go to the <laughs> Norwegian base, and it's just like the frozen blood. Oh yeah. That was so good. Or the yeah. scene when, he, the during the test where he's getting caught and mm-hmm. he starts expanding, he's getting those flipper hands. Yep. And, uh, yeah. That's so gross. And that so that was all on a stage, and it was actually not super cold. Um, they they found that they could actually so they they sort of refrigerated that whole, um, you know, uh, uh, set, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it's filmed in California. But they, they realized that they didn't actually have to get it super, super cold if it was humid. And then they can see people's breaths. 
But um, the neat thing, uh, the neat thing about that base is it's so it's been exposed to the environment, so you see like ice and everything there. Mm-hmm. But that's all. So all that feeling of cold, like we only a couple times see their breath. So everything else is just art design. It's all production design, and so it, that's a great example of just visually making a location feel cold mm-hmm. and to design all of that to make it feel like, oh my god, this is Antarctica. Definitely felt cold. But it's also like they're basically just waiting for a reason to blow themselves up for just for whatever. Absolutely. And and I I think along with the dynamite blowing the thing up, their method of, hey, let's destroy the base is the worst method. <laughs> like, well, let's throw a stick of dynamite in this room. Now in this room. And it just sort of blows up and sort mm-hmm. of burns down. But half the structure is still there. So I don't think you're really killing the thing. I think there is a point that they're kind of stressed out. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. As far as planning goes as well, do you think if you blow up your base, mm-hmm. do you think that'll just be the end of it, or do you think there might be somebody who's interested in your research coming to investigate what happened? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe to right. do it. And we know that the thing likes to dig, even when it's inside Wilford Bramley. Is that right? <laughs> is he the one who tunnels? Yes. 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 Mm. Yes. Right. So yeah. we know that so, uh, yeah. it likes to dig when unsupervised. Uh-huh. Very and, well. And and build a spaceship when you're not checking. Likes on to it. dig when unsupervised. So it's <laughs> body snatchers mixed with alien mixed mm-hmm. with tremors now, mm-hmm. with the digging. Right. But also though, like, couldn't it? No, never mind. That's dumb. <laughs> oh no! Please, oh, let's hear know. it. I'll probably agree. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't there be some other way it could, if it, if just the tiniest little piece of it, like if it, and we know it likes to dig, so couldn't it just get, if it could get close to the water, it could find like a little fish friend, right? In theory, yeah. I mean, but I do think a more efficient plan than completely blowing up the base would probably have just been to like stand in a circle and like shoot each other one by one right? <laughs> or try to you know your, your plan sounds a whole lot better <laughs> dig a big hole so you're really worried the about the in the hole get everybody in the and hole and then dynamite that so it all goes and on then top dynamite that hole. you're really you worried as a property owner you could, like, <laughs> yeah. you could like just toss one dynamite up in the air and it would land back in the hole mm-hmm. and then maybe like write down what happened so that if yeah. people come they know to stay away just don't go to Antarctica. Don't leave a big mess and a mystery. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> well, I think what they've done is they've actually doomed humanity by blowing everything up. Because they are. They're going to say, hey, have you heard from Outpost 31 lately? Oh, maybe we should check on them. And then they fly in and they melt it all down. And what they do is they uncover an entire city of these little microorganisms all just frozen there in the ice. Because Things. Right? Because they blow it up. So, like, theoretically, like, if your thumb, if there's, like somebody's thumb that got away it's gonna grow crab spider legs and just keep looking around right. and looking around or whoever's coming by to drop off supplies next yeah. just <laughs> looking around and all of a sudden that thing's living in the truck that's going from base to base out yeah. there so okay so like, if we're, if we're like talking jeff the supply guy shows up and he's like what's up guys i'm people hey um is everyone okay just like a thumb with legs crawls up <laughs> and gets him so if we're talking like remakes or uh, sequels or something like that, so my, my so what I would say I would so I'm not going to suggest a remake. I'm going to suggest a sequel to where it's made its way back to civilization, and it's kind of normalized, like as in like oh yeah, it, it's a thing that happens and it's slowly devouring all of us. So it's like but HPV, it's been, but yeah. <laughs> And, and it is eventually going to over, overtake us, but it, we've kind of gotten back to regular life as well. But so, it's also fine. so this is like three years in. We've lost a third of our population, but we're still we still got day jobs. Yeah, and that yeah. computer was wrong about how many hours. Well, I mean, it's just one computer trying to do all those calculations. <laughs> um, but there is a sequel. It's prequel. not really a sequel. Prequel. Yeah. Mm, comic books. Is it the Norway guys? It is. That's the prequel, right? Yeah. Which is also just called The Thing. And it goes right up yeah. until the very beginning moment of Where The Thing. So it's, it's one big continuous story. Have you seen story. it? I have. Thoughts? Uh, they really should have stuck to practical effects and uh, computer-generated effects. 
Yeah, you can In general. I'm not impressed with that gross every movie. shit yeah. unless it's like a real disgusting rubber thing that's on somebody's body. You sound just like the critics when this movie came out. <laughs> it's too gross. Oh. It is gross, but if it's going to be if it's going to be gross, I'd rather have it be gross and real. Yeah. As opposed to yes. gross. You want to think, how did they do that? Instead yeah. of, yeah. I wonder how long that took to render. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You want to be like, ew, how many, how, ew, ew. Whose job is it to make that gross? Yeah, like who went to a butcher shop and was just like, oh, let's just mush it all together and flip it over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, like if you've ever, like there's a makeup effect show on sci-fi where it's like Project Runway, but they have to make creature effects. Like, that's somebody's entire job. That's their whole day, every day for months, is to be like, I just can't get this chest mouth right. What is? What am I missing, guys? It's got shark teeth. Did you add more dog tongues? <sighs> I already did dog tongues. I oh. feel like oh, I know. seen dog tongues. Add a gallon of KY jelly. Boom, that okay, did it. Okay, okay, all right. But I feel like just needs more crab legs and wormy things. Just flip it upside down, put eyes in the bottom. Okay, I like it. I like where I like where you're going with that mouth on the top. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes that. That'll freak you out. It's gross. It's not where the mouth goes. <laughs> it's not where it goes. Um, but so you would go sequel. Do you yes. Have, do you have someone like in mind to be the star? Like, but in yours, like Kurt Russell's <laughs> so dead. It, well, in my yeah, in, in my version, it's totally ridiculous. So it, it's all commonplace. It's I would so I what I would do is I would do a romantic comedy. So I'd do Matthew McConaughey. And J Lo, trying to kind of like do this, but this is all going on in the background. Yeah. What are their jobs in this? Um, he would be a, a uh, an an advertising man, and she'd be maybe the new client, and he's trying to impress her. So I'd a hundred percent just lean into not a horror so look, genre. First, first thing is just workplace sexual harassment. Yes. <laughs> But then, like in the background, like the so, secretaries so as, are as, getting if, thinged, and like yeah, no, it would a hundred percent be a romantic thinged. comedy. But people are being killed one by one and being ripped apart and eaten alive. Uh, I got to call out. I need. I need a. I have, I have a thing day. <laughs> <laughs> right. I might have a thing day. My mom oh, got did. thinged, and I got to clean up now. Yeah. So it'd be a hundred percent underplayed. So that's my. That's my movie. I like it. Where are you Did going? You? I, I got a thing. I got a thing. No, no, no. I mean, I got a... I got a oh, jeez. I have an activity. I have so, an activity. So if, if this movie was kind of a metaphor for... That's the perfect title for it, by the way. <laughs> the, if, <laughs> I've got a thing. <laughs> I've got a thing. <laughs> yes. So if this was kind of a, a metaphor for, like, AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, things like that, um, the sequel would be a metaphor for modern dating. That's both dark and optimistic. <laughs> right. I like it. Uh, do you have a recast, reboot thoughts on what you would do to update? Well, I didn't. And then I got to thinking about it. You know, if we're going to remake this, let's do it fun. And so then I thought it could be kind of more comedic. Still a horror movie, but comedic. And then I thought it needs Kevin Hart. And it needs Kevin Hart <laughs> as either Childs or as... Uh, uh, I don't know, one, one, one of the other guys. I can't, I can't think of his name now. There are so many names that are unattached to really memorable characters. So. Mm-hmm. But it's got to have Kevin Hart. And then I was thinking, yeah, could it have Clint Eastwood as, as McCready? No, maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of those two. So, <laughs> so we're doing <laughs> elderly. They're old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm so, the oldest helicopter this, this, pilot in Antarctica. This is the Space exactly. Cowboys. <laughs> we're going to make it super funny. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, it, it's in a retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> I go see that. So it's like cocoon. Yeah. It's in a retirement home in Antarctica. Like all the... I haven't finished my research. It's, it's, it's in a retirement in like Scottsdale. I just keep getting my grants funded. I just want to go home. Please. No more research. The third Marigold Hotel movie. All right. This is I, Bubba Hotep. I'm pretty excited yeah. to hear your thoughts, Adam. This, some of these were tough. Okay. I was thinking, honestly, the hardest one was McCready. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I don't think there is a Kurt Russell right now. <sighs> Except Kurt Russell. Yeah. So he's Santa Claus. And he is Santa Claus. In this movie, in the, in the, in the remake. <laughs> Santa <laughs> Claus comes in. Thinking for box office, mm-hmm. we could do Chris Hemsworth. Oh, my God. That's exactly 
my thought. If not him, I would want to go Rez Ahmed, the guy Ooh. from uh, what's what's that show called? The, mm-hmm. the night. Be- it happened the before? night before. The night before. The night. Yeah. The night before I've got a thing. Mm-hmm. The night before I got a thing. Mm-hmm. For Childs, I want Michael B. Jordan, oh, with the yeah. Keith David part. Uh-huh. I think he would be. He'd have a lot of pushback. He's good at that. Yeah. Intimidating enough for that role. Yeah. For. Uh, Dr. Blair, who's Wilford Brimley. I want J.K. Simmons. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like that. Yours is better than mine. For Gary, the idiot who breaks the window and <laughs> shoots. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, the commander guy. I think Brian oh, yeah, Cranston yeah. would be good for that. I think oh, yeah. He, he can definitely play a doofus. Mm-hmm. For Nalls, I want uh, Donald Glover. For Windows, I want Oliver Jackson Cohen. Have you guys seen... Uh, Haunting of Hill House yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. He's the heroin addict guy. Oh, he's good. With the giant beard. And uh, for Vance, the, the fat guy whose head falls off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tom Segura, the comedian, would be perfect for that. Wow, you did them all. Well done. Those are my guys. As always. That's great. <laughs> uh, I, so I also thought Chris Hemsworth. Uh, my second choice would be Chris Pratt. Although he's too cute and winky. Mm-hmm. So maybe, as I always recommend, Dan Stevens, who can do anything. You, none of you know who Dan Stevens is, do you? I don't Stevens know who Dan Stevens is, is no. Nothing? No? I, it, who, I know that he can I, do anything. I'm shocked to learn uh, that you guys are not huge fans of Downton Abbey, just based on your other <laughs> interests. Which one is he in that? <laughs> He's Matthew Crawley. Which one is Matthew Crawley? <laughs> <laughs> is that the horse driver? <laughs> no. It's the handsome young man who's going to inherit everything with the piercing blue eyes. Oh, He's the also guy. Legion. How much of that Legion? show? How much of that show have you seen? I've I've seen it all. Okay, the guy who dies in the car wreck. Yes, he dies in a car wreck. And then <laughs> Spoiler. I spoiler. <laughs> Great. Now I'm not going to go see. Oh, that. sorry. Well, what what else was that he even in? He's in FX Legion. The sh- it's kind of an X Men sort of show. Have you seen it? Not yet. Have it's on the list. Is it good? It's, it's insane. It's impossible to watch because nothing makes sense, and at no point are you ever, like, grounded in reality. You're like, okay. I love the later seasons of Lost. <laughs> this is real. What, Downton Abbey? <laughs> 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 well, it's like, I don't even know. But he's also, um, like, he's in everything. I can't believe you guys don't know any. Anyway, look him up. Uh, but then I thought uh, for, uh, you had Michael B. Jordan. I thought Sterling K. Brown. He's a little bit meaner. You don't know who he is. None of you know who he is. Sounds very familiar. Is he? Uh, he's on Downton Abbey as well. He's on This Is Us. He plays uh, oh. Mr. He plays Johnny Downton Abbey. He's in Supernatural. Nothing. Yeah, these no. are 100 percent shows I don't see. Okay. This Is Us. What is that? That's one. I saw, I saw one, one guy dies from the toaster. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly it. Uh, and then I would throw in there for the Wilford Brimley, uh, Nick Offerman. Oh yeah, that would be mm-hmm. good. And then yeah. I kind of went the same way that you did, Jonathan, like putting comedic people in there because I thought. Uh, Kamel Nanjiani would be great as just one of the other guys, and Keegan Michael Key would be good. Uh, Did anybody see the newest Predator? No, but I've heard of it, and I know he's in it. <laughs> he's in it. He's in that too. Uh, so he definitely would do. I think, it think Rain Wilson can go into one of those parts too <laughs> in a pinch. Did you see the Meg? No. <laughs> you should see the Meg. I've he heard about it. He was good in House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, he was. Yes. He was really good. <gasps> Mermaid Boy. So. Um, one upside down head spider creature out of ten. How many dog tongues do we give it? <laughs> how many, how many flamethrowers on a scale of one to ten do you give the thing, Jonathan? I give seven, seven flamethrowers. Wow. You yeah. must be a harsh, like, critic. I am. Because you love this movie. I do. I love this movie. But and it's a seven. It's a seven. Yeah. Okay. But there's a lot of love in those flamethrowers. They're, they're <laughs> fully charged. They're fully charged flamethrowers. It's a maximum seven. Yeah, it's what a maximum would, so seven. So what would you give a ten? I don't know if I have a ten. I have a hard time. You're one of those? So, who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is a ten. Is a ten. That's a ten. Terrifying okay. movie. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that is such a scary movie. What's an eight? What's one better than the thing? Adam's Starship Troopers. Values. Starship Troopers. Oh, Starship Troopers. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. More Adam. Verhoeven. Yes. Yes. More gross things yes. growing uh-huh. yes. out of people's midsections. Yeah. 
Interestingly, on a, on a real quick note, the uh, the guy, Botine, who did special effects for mm-hmm. this, went on to do RoboCop. RoboCop, mm-hmm. yes. And Total Recall. We were just talking about yeah. that guy who loves gross things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot get enough of chest mouths. All right, Adam, how many flamethrowers? I'm going to give it nine flamethrowers and one dynamite. Wow, okay. It's just, I don't think there's ever going to be a time where that movie is on and I'm going to say, oh, I got something better to do. Mm-hmm. You're going to sit gonna, down. I'm going to watch the thing. You're going to fully sit down and commit to it. Mm-hmm. So just this, just this, the absolute filthy, disgusting gore creatures are, are so viscerally effective. It's like, I, there's just, there's nothing else in my day that's going to hit me like that unless it's a car. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Let's, <laughs> let's really aim for no. Speaking of, I did get in a car wreck the day after the last recording of this podcast I did. So be okay? extra careful driving home. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Safely. <laughs> yeah, it was like literally the next day I got rear-ended. Oh, no. Everything was okay? Car okay? You no, okay? car was destroyed. Car done. Yeah, five herniated discs. Oh, my God. But Five Hermione, that seems yeah. like so many. Yeah, that's, How many do you have? I don't know. Six? <laughs> like, five five that, less quality is ones. Is that all of them? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's mostly back to normal now. It's okay. It's been almost a year. Has it? Wow. All yeah. Right. Well, I'm glad you're on the mend, and I'm sorry. So fingers crossed out there, everybody. <laughs> let's, let's hope a pattern Stay doesn't uh, present itself. Um, what would you call a tent? What what movie would you say is a ten? Mad Max Fury Road. Really, I love it. I love that one. I love it too, but a ten. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Just not a minute of that movie where I'm not fully committed. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this: I argued I wanted this to be our our Christmas special, mm-hmm. and I was told it's not a Christmas movie. Like uh, Die Hard. Like Die, Die Hard. Christmas movie. Um, That's what Die Hard was our Christmas movie. But like when you're so you're in this scenario. You're like, oh, the thing is on. I'm going to sit down and watch that. Oh, look, they're all so cold. I want to just get a blanket. I want to get my slanket. I'm going to cuddle up. I'm going to have some cocoa. Family, gather around. Come, let's all watch this <laughs> torso mouth. Eat somebody and, and remember the joy of being alive. Or, you know, whiskey. And, and, <laughs> right? I would say that's No, the thing, a the thing is different because the thing is the shitty part of winter. I see. <laughs> it's the part where... All the good stuff is over, mm-hmm. and now you just have to deal with the reality of the terrible nature that winter can be. Got nothing left to look forward to, except the the end, the end of winter. Except to, try to look forward to finding some reason to blow up your research facility. Mm-hmm. There's nothing fun left after Christmas, and that's what the thing is. It's think, all horror. I think this is a Christmas movie, actually, and I think that Kurt Russell is like Krampus. Because you have the thing trying to bring everybody together. It's all about love. Everybody needs to be one, joined together, and then you have Kurt Russell just blowing them up. You've been bad. You've been bad. You've been bad. So it's a metaphor for Santa Claus. Which Kurt Russell is Santa Claus. (laughs) Christmas Chronicles. There's your Christmas special right there. Uh, All right. How many flamethrowers? I'm also going to give it nine flamethrowers and a stick of dynamite. Okay. And... um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a, a wonderful film. Uh, I think that you should try to get people who know nothing about it uh, to watch it and surprise them. Don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them, <laughs> tell them that it's a great suspense movie. And I want to as many people to be totally freaked out about this as possible. Preferably after they just had like a huge spaghetti dinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, especially if they were a dog lover. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I thought the dog acting was very good. Like when that dog oh, did yeah. not want to go in there, I believed that it was yeah. like really weighing its options. Yeah. And it's tough because that's a half wolf. So they're, they're harder to train. Well, that one's really smart. Is that like, is he white fang? Do we know? Has he done other work? Uh, let me check his IMDb. Hang on. Yeah. Hop on there. <laughs> um, see, here, I'll probably give it a 7-2, but like really? for me, that's not that great. Oh, okay. I'm a very harsh critic. I gave Mannequin an 8. <laughs> wow. So. Okay, by your scale then, it'd be probably a 9. A 12 and a stick to of 14, dynamite. Yeah. 
So who who's in Mannequin? Who's in Mannequin? Uh, Andrew McCarthy, um, the uh, guy Meshach Taylor, um, and Kim Cattrall. And she's a sexy mannequin that comes to life uh, when only Andrew McCarthy is around. And he becomes a uh, world-renowned window dresser. That's a nine. And love wins. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your... We'll go the opposite direction. What is your deep cut recommendation, Nathan? Uh, I'm going to go with The Shining. Um, and, and did nice. anyone else take that one? Okay. Uh, so again, not... You, so I don't I don't hate horror, but it's not like in my top tier genres. But if you're looking to if you're if you're not a horror person, but you're still looking for like an awesome movie that is in fact scary, super scary, uh, The Thing and The Shining, and maybe if I had to toss in a third one, the, like the original Haunting from like 1963, those are all like amazing, suspenseful creepy as all get out horror films that that are very accessible i think to everyone and you should try to surprise people with them <laughs> well, a lot less torso mouths than the shining <laughs> yes a few but, less but just as creepy and disgusting that's true that's true all right adam what is your deep cut recommendation uh my deep cut recommendation is going to be tombstone with kurt russell because I forgot how good that movie was. It's so good. And then my wife turned to me when I was endlessly scrolling through the options on whatever, Netflix, Amazon, one of those. And she's like, oh, Tombstone. I've never seen that. And I was like, oh, my God. You got to. Uh, uh, I, I, I was in third grade when I saw that. I had 10 boners. And <laughs> <laughs> so we started watching it. And I was like, oh, that's Billy Bob Thornton. Is he recognizing me? Kind of a chubby Billy Bob mm-hmm. Thornton, yeah. And... Just all the way through, I was like, ah, people aren't talking enough about Tombstone these days. That's true. And, and Kurt Russell, uh, we didn't mention, like, how great his line delivery, for, like, for a movie that doesn't have a lot of dialogue, like, all of the dialogue that's coming out of Kurt Russell is brilliant, um, especially when he's, like, telling the thing to fuck off, or what does he say? <laughs> and fuck you, too. Fuck you. He, like, barrel rolls, pops up. <laughs> 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 That's the one bit Fuck of... Fuck you, too! And then sets right. it on fire. Uh, but, he, but even that whole speech where he's like, I know I'm human. By, by the way, in that scene, if you had to remove your blood for a test, would you cut half your thumb off? Oh, jeez. Thank you again, Adam. I wrote that down as well. Like, you don't need to cut that much. You don't like, need to cut your gonna, Oh, yeah. If you're in a dangerous situation, you're probably going to want to keep your hands usable ready to go <laughs> also you just created a giant opportunity to, to get thinged like it's gonna it's gonna hop right in yeah if you can squeeze your fingers into a guy's face you could probably just yeah. shove it up and stop just be like ooh now just everyone has an open oh wound. there's an opening I got my tiny tendril right from there yeah, yeah I agree yeah I would have cut the side of my arm I think it's really not that I painful I would have found the diabetic testing kit that you know they've got somewhere up in there and just yeah, done a little, a little boop a lancet just, just a little damn little it the boop. thing destroyed our diabetic testing kit okay wait all it's <laughs> one step ahead of us <laughs> <laughs> Wilfred Brimley is really mad <laughs> oh, yeah yeah exactly um, but couldn't they also just like if they had tried to electrocute their finger or something no would it also not have made the blood mad no, no, the blood is not mad unless it's out of the body. <laughs> oh, so cutting it is fine. Okay. No burning. But once it's out of the body, then it's like, then now can. we're our own thing. We're also a thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's explained in the movie. Was it? <laughs> it's implied. <Was> it? <laughs> yeah. I must have walked out of the room at that moment where it was explained. Uh, what is your deep cut recommendation, Jonathan? Uh, well, uh, you touched on it earlier, actually. The uh, 1978 Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Mm. I think um, mm-hmm. you know you're dealing with aliens still. You're dealing with cloning, duplication, but you know you're also dealing with the uh, the paranoia mm-hmm. of not knowing who to trust. And is that the one where they go on your back and they look like? No, I believe that's the later 1990s something. No, this one's where there are little alien-like pods and the little tendrils come out and they get you while you're sleeping and they wrap you up in a cocoon. Yeah. I do not like tendrils. Yeah. No, thank you. Keep this those is the final t- tendril film. <laughs> Although I, my honorable mention on the Kurt Russell podcast was Hateful Eight. 
So Get a you've said Kurt Tombstone, Russell. a little mm-hmm. more Kurt Russell because is it also there have been a snowstorm. They're all isolated. Mm-hmm. Who done it? You know, one by one, and you're down to two people. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Also super gross. Yeah. Yeah. Also mention. super gross. Yeah. Be uh, the Warriors because Windows is in both. <laughs> <laughs> You don't see that guy a lot. <laughs> that is the deepest. You guy. sure don't. <laughs> um, I couldn't really think of anything. Like I, I don't think what my deep cut recommendation is super good. Adam, um, I think all of your deep cut recommendations should be the Warriors from here on yeah. out. <laughs> Definitely, different. Episode. Not enough people are talking about the Warriors no, these I days. I know we were so upset that it came out in 1979. Although I'm willing to bargain. If you do a 1979, I will do a 1991. It's not you doing a 1991. It's you doing a specific, what's the movie? Young Guns 2, I think. (laughs) Or Mannequin 2, Mannequin on the Move. Another nine. (laughs) (laughs) That one's not as good, Adam. I mean, I take this seriously. (laughs) Anyway, uh, I recommend The Exiles, like the original series. There's an episode, I think, in possibly season one or two called Ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know the episode I'm Uh talking about? Where it's like basically the thing they're stuck in a research facility, which by the way, don't go to an Antarctic research facility. No one comes out of there having like invented something fun. They never come out of there like, I had a great time. I really learned about me. Ahem, I will point to the documentary. The penguins. What did the penguins do? The The march of the penguins. (laughs) A lot of fun came out of that. Morgan Freeman survived just fine. Uh, but in that episode, there's, like, a little worm, and it's the same thing. Like, if the worm is in you, then you go crazy and try and kill everyone, and they don't know who is, has the worm right. in them or whatever. Uh, aren't, aren't they doing, like, a full body inspection of everyone? They're taking off their clothes. And mm-hmm. Looking for the worm. David Duchovny, he goes, like, just remember, it's, it's cool. Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> well remembered, Nathan. <laughs> But I think there's a part in that, too, where it's, like, it always has to be, nothing ever invades your body and then just, like, wants to take you to a spa day. Like, <laughs> I want to get in your body, and we're going to go get a hot stone massage. Yeah, I, that's kind of how parasites work. I, I think there's probably a lot of tapeworms and people that are enjoying a pretty healthy existence. God, that would be a nice movie if it was... <laughs> Just something that crawls inside you and then just eats all your dread. Yeah. <laughs> I, think there's a, I, I think there's a movie that's kind of like that. It's still me- meant to be kind of gross, but oh, shoot. I'm, I'm uh, with you. I can't think of the name either. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, I'm it's, sure it's, uh, there is hang one. on. Let me, let me, hang on, let's, let's pause. I can pull it right up because I know Angelica Houston's in it. And like the, the tendrils make you happy? Absolutely. They give you energy and it's, I think it, yeah so let's see mm-hmm. so I haven't seen like the tendrils place. they just like crawl on top of your head and give you Kurt Russell hair oh, if only <laughs> that would if be a good only. alien oh but I do think our remake should be set in the 80s like it shouldn't be a modern they're not in 2019 out in the ice they're, they're still in 1982 well and that's why I didn't like the prequel because it was set in the 80s but it didn't feel like an 80s movie mm-hmm. at all so if you're going to watch them chronologically, you just can't do it. Well, how familiar are you with 80s Norway? <laughs> oh, I'm familiar with 80s Norway. They then had, they had then you know. Stuff. <laughs> they had digital way before we did. 20 years before we did. Did you find it? So, it's, so there's a movie called The Cleanse, where a heartbroken man attends a spiritual retreat to cleanse himself and fix his broken life. There he meets a fellow lost soul. Together they discover that The Cleanse release is more than everyday toxins. And so, like, these creatures come out of them. Is that from the same guy who directed The Lobster? <laughs> no. But is that is that basically Scientology? Yeah, I think so. It's like, oh, you got all these thetans in there. Mm. You got to cleanse it. Better get them out. Don't hang out with those suppressive persons. Hey, maybe the real sequel is The Stuff. Maybe that's really the, <laughs> the sequel thing. to The Thing. <laughs> the Stuff, and it's just about hoarders. Yeah. <laughs> No, I said, not, <laughs> you haven't seen The Stuff? It's, it's a movie about this. Wait, no, there's a real movie there's called The Stuff? There's a real movie called The Stuff. It, it, this, this ooze comes up from the ground. It's this white stuff. It looks kind of like Cool Whip. And when you, it gets inside, you eat it, and it takes over your brain. And all the people start, they start selling this and marketing it. It's called The Stuff. 
and they had ads and the old lady from the old uh you know where's the beef commercial she was saying where's the stuff and yeah i think oreo he really took that, that on up. no i did not up. make that this, this up, those double but. stuff Dude, what did that get is that like a six <laughs> that's like a two okay. <laughs> I have so many gross things to say, and I'm not going to say them. Uh, all right, so what? Um, where can people? Are you? Do you have anything cool coming up? People can find you. They can go here. You have a website, yes. Mm-hmm. Tell tell us about it. So, if you want to hear more of me, you can search "Acting Coach Dan Rodandon Teaching Actors How to Act." It is a podcast where I play a despicable human being, <laughs> just trying to do his best out there. And uh, it will be coming back in the beginning of 2019. It's been on hiatus. And somehow during hiatus, it's quadrupled its subscribers. So wow. the best thing I ever did was take a break. <laughs> Maybe that's the key, Nathan. Maybe we just need to lay off for a while. So hopefully I won't alienate them in 2019. Acting coach Dan Rodandon teaching actors how to act. Wonderful. Woohoo. And Jonathan, anything that people can find you? Yeah, you can find me at shootingzen.com, but uh, I haven't updated it in a long time. So this will give me impetus. Like by the time this airs, maybe I'll have had, <laughs> uh, you know, I got to get something new up there because my Google traffic is way down. I haven't updated lately. So maybe this will, you know. Uh, what about you, Nathan? Anything usual stuff or anything Yeah, new? the usual stuff, squishystudios.com. Um, there's a blog on there now that I'm trying to do monthly, do a filmmaker blog for Filmmakers just kind of like sharing the process. Um, but yeah, Voyage Trekkers, um, still at Voyage Trekkers for all the Facebooks and Twitters and the dot coms. Wonderful. And of course, you can find Chrissy at NCT Phoenix, the website, and NCT Phoenix, the place. If you happen to be in downtown Mesa, Arizona, uh, you know, do all the podcast stuff you're supposed to do like rate, review, thumbs up, share, tell a fellow human, write it on an paper airplane and throw it into the woods <laughs> no wait not the woods <laughs> blow it up with a stick of dynamite so that blow it up with dynamite <laughs> we really need jason to subscribe to this <laughs> we do he has a cute he, he's an instagram influencer he has a lot to say uh yeah and so uh, thank you so much for listening and uh you know remember the most excellent 80s movie podcast motto be excellent to each other and i know i'm human I know I'm human. I know I'm human. And I'm the thing! Oh no! So fuck you too! <laughs>